to our first ever virtual vacation Bible school. I'm so glad you decided to join us today. We are going to have a lot of fun. So share this post. Tell your friends about virtual vacation Bible school. You want them to be here because we are going to have a blast this week. Now, if you haven't heard, we are giving away two free Nintendo Switches this week. If you want your name in an extra time for the entry, go ahead and comment your name along with where you're watching from below, and we'll get your name in an extra time to win a Nintendo Switch. Man, that is awesome. I'm, I might even try to get my name in there. But we are so excited about what we got going this week. Uh, first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna sing some songs. So I know you might be just sitting in your living room, sitting on your couch, but stand up for me and sing loud so that the neighbors will wonder what in the world is going on in that house over there. And we're gonna sing the B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. As we sing, let's remember, you know what? The Bible is the word of God. It is the most important book in this world. Let's sing together the B-I-B-L-E. The B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the Word of God for the B-I-B-L-E Bible. The B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the Word of God for the B-I-B-L-E Bible. singing that song. Now we've got some special friends that are going to share with us a very special Bible verse. 1 Thessalonians 5, 18. It's about being thankful, something that every single one of us should do, should be thankful for what God has given us in our life. As we learn this Bible verse, make sure all of you are saying it with us. We should all be hiding God's word in our heart. So as we learn this verse, everybody say it out loud and learn it together. Hi everybody, today we're going to be learning 1 Thessalonians 5.18. My name's Austin and I have Landon here to help me. He's going to be repeating after me just like I want you to repeat after me as we learn the verses. And we'll try to have some fun with them. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So basically what it's saying here is we need to give thanks to God for everything he's given us. So. I just need to start off, we're going to do it normal. I need you to repeat after me, okay, Landon? So 1 Thessalonians 5.18. 1 Thessalonians 5.18. In everything, give thanks. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God. <laughs> For this is the will of God. In Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. Concerning you. Concerning you. Well, I see you're already laughing, but we're going to, trust me, it's going to get a lot funnier. We're going to go ahead and we're going to do our football player. Can you do a football player? Get in your football stance. Uh, that's not Ready? More like this. More like this? Okay, we got it. First Thessalonians 518! First Thessalonians 518! And everything give 
thanks. And everything give thanks. For this is the will of God. For this is the will of God. In Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. Concerning you. Concerning you. <gasps> Good job, Landon. Okay, now we're going to do our cheerleader voice. Do you think you can brace your inner cheerleader? Uh, yeah. Okay, you got to do motions, okay? Um, Ready? First Thessalonians 5, 8. Okay, everybody, you guys did a good job landing. You did a good job giving me a fist bump. Now we're gonna go ahead and we are gonna do our favorite cartoon character voices. Okay. So you can choose whatever your favorite cartoon character is or a voice you're good at, and you can go ahead and do it. And everything give thanks. And everything give thanks. For this is the will of God. For this is the will of God. And Christ Jesus. And Christ Jesus. Concerning you. Concerning you. First Thessalonians 5.18. First Thessalonians 5.18. Okay, good job everybody. Make sure you keep working on those verses and memorizing them because we should always try to remember God's word. I hope all of you were able to hide God's word in your heart and learn that Bible verse with us. That is a great verse. In fact, we're going to sing a couple songs right now about rejoicing in the Lord and being thankful to Him. Let's all sing together. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Everybody, I hope that you thank the Lord every single day for what he's given you. Now, we're going to have Mr. Austin come and share a special lesson from God's word with us. So make sure you're sitting up straight in your chairs, hands on your lap, have your Bibles open and ready to go, and pay attention to the screen. I know we're not there to, to watch and see who's paying attention and see who's sitting up straight and got cheesy smiles on their faces, but make sure that you are paying attention during this time. This is the most important part of the day. So sit up straight and listen as we hear a lesson from God's word. I got some money, I got some money, I got some money, hey, 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 oh! Whoa! Oh, sorry, are you okay? Sure, what's all the excitement about? I got some money! <laughs> That's awesome! So, how much are you going to give back to God? Well, 
What are you talking about? God gives us all of this good stuff we have, like like the pizza you ate last week, your, your bike, your family, and... That funny thing you have in the back of your throat and only see when you say, Ah! Yeah, even that. And because you're thankful, you give some back. Like, I could give some of the money to my church? Yeah, sure. And that helps other people have food to eat, clean water, and hear about God and how they can go to heaven. Just what I give will do all that? When everyone gives, it does that and a whole lot more. Not only that, But when we give, we're showing God how thankful we are for what He has given to us. Well, I don't think I'm going to give part of the money back to God. I'm going to give all of it because I'm thankful for what God has given me. I'm I'm giving giving God God my my money, God my my money, God my money. So we're going to be in 1 Thessalonians 5.18 today. And so it really focuses here on giving thanks No matter what we go through in all things, we're supposed to give thanks. And so we're going to read it and then we'll get started. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So this is a command God's giving us so that this will help us to have a positive attitude. Because if we're thankful, we're going to be focusing on all the things we have and all the things God's given us rather than what we don't have. And when we focus on the things we don't have, you know, that causes us to kind of grumble and we say, oh, they have this, they have that giant new race car set, and they maybe they have this um, tea set, or they have these toys, maybe for girls, maybe it's dolls. I'm not a, I don't play with dolls, obviously, but I would say for girls, maybe they have these cooler dolls, and they have all these cool things. And we focus on that, you know what? We start to have a bad attitude. We're like, it's not fair. You know, they're, they're, it's just they get all these things and I don't have them. But what God's telling us here is that we need to focus on what we do have. We need to be thankful for all the things God's given us. And it's a blessing to see all of what God has for us. And we should be happy for other people even getting things. And if we're content with what we have, you know, we're thankful for all that God's given us we're going to have a good attitude rather than a sorry attitude. You know, even in my life, I often have trouble with this because instead of being thankful in all things and obeying the command God's given us, say, you know what? They, my, my friend over there has a nicer car than I do. Now, yeah, it's not quite toys anymore because it's gotten a lot more expensive, but they have this really cool sports car and it gets more expensive and it can get even harder as you're older because then you want bigger and bigger things. And you get more jealous of what everybody else has. But we should be happy for other people and we should be thankful for what God's given us. We shouldn't be focused on those other things. But focused on what God has given us the ability to have. So maybe it's you're you're not thankful for maybe the toys you have. You're just you're like, ah, well, you should be thankful. You should just be thankful for any toys God's given you the ability to have. And that will help you to have a positive attitude. For me, this is a big one. You should be thankful for the food you get. Maybe you go to McDonald's and you know what? The other kids all get a happy meal. And they're like, yeah! And they get the toy and they get all the food inside, the french fries and the nuggets. And all you get is a hamburger. There's not even cheese on there. And you just get a hamburger and you're like, oh, well, he gets that. Well, be thankful for what you do have. I think a hamburger is pretty good. You know that McDonald's hamburger? That'd be pretty, it's a pretty good thing. And you get the ability to have that. You should be thankful for what you have and what God's given you rather than what other people have. And you know that really will help you to have a positive attitude. It, it all comes down, that's something even I have to work at. Not say, hey, they have the money to get all this stuff. Be like, God's given me this. At least I get to go eat at McDonald's. At least I get a burger and to get to hang out with my family. Another thing that we can be thankful for is our parents. You know, often this is something that we can all struggle with is we're, say, they have really cool parents. 
you know, that, that guy's parent, he, he works for this cool agency and maybe he's a spy. He has, they have all this money. Maybe he works for this big company and they're rich. They have a huge four story house. They have a giant swimming pool in the backyard. You know, I wish I had their parents because they have so much better than I do. I just live in this little house and the front door kind of barely opens and you know, it's not fair. But we could just be focused on, hey, we get a roof over our head and I have great parents that love me and they want to take care of me. And we should be thankful for what we do have. You know, there's plenty of kids out there that don't even have parents. So we should be thankful that we get the ability to have a parent or parents. And so another thing we can be thankful for is that we get to go to church. I know you guys aren't here today, but you get to watch us on live stream. I'm so excited that you guys are watching. And you get, we get to learn about God together. We should be thankful that we have the ability to do that and that we get to hear about God. And so we should be really thankful for that. And so we really just need to focus on what we have and what God's given us and be thankful for no matter what it is, whether people have better stuff or maybe they have cooler things, we should be thankful for what God gave us. And that will cause us to have a positive attitude. And rather than be focused on other things, we'll be focused on God. So then again, next, I want to read Colossians 3.17. It says, And whatsoever ye do in word or in deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. So Colossians 3.17 really tells us how we need to be thankful. It's no matter what goes on in our life and all the things that happen to us, whether our friends are mean to us or, you know, we just don't have as much and we tend to be not having a good attitude about it, we, we need to look to God and be thankful for all he's given to us because that's the biggest thing is all the things we have were given to us by God. So we should be thankful not only for the things God's given us, but we should be thankful for God. And God's done so much for us. And it's amazing that we even get to live here and we get to have all the stuff we have and it's all because of God. So in the video we watched, it showed that that one um, kid, he, he got some money. He's like all excited because he got some money. So let's just say I gave you a dollar and you were like, I was like, and I gave it to you and you're like, you know, I, maybe I should give this back to God. And I'm not saying you always have to do that, but just say you feel like God wants you to give it back to him. So you're like, well, I, I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it back. And that would be, that would be kind of hard, but I think, I think you guys could do it. You could just say, hey, you know what? I'm going to put it in the offering. I'm going to give it back to God today. Well, what if I was to say here, I'm pulling out a $5 bill. I'm going to say, I want you guys. It's like you, you just say, hey, oh, thank you so much. Whoever gave it to you, you're just so, so excited. And you're like, well, I should probably give some of this back to God. And you're like, so now you have to give half of this back to God. Well, that's, that's $2.50. You know, I could buy a couple candy bars with that. Oh, wait, I could buy two McChickens with that. Or I could buy some chicken nuggets and a sundae. Whew. And it's like, well, well, yeah, I'll give half of it back and I can still go to McDonald's. And then it might be even a little harder to say, oh, whoa, God, you want me to give this all back to you? Well, you know what? We'll really have a good attitude if we're thankful. Even if we have to give it back, say, God, you've given me so much, I can give this right back to you. So maybe you finally get to the point you say, I'm going to give this back to you, God. Or I'm going to, you want me to give this $5 bill to someone else that needs it more, God? I'll give it to them. Well, now that's, I think you guys could do that. It might take a little work. Well, let's say now I pull out, you have a $50 bill. It was blowing on the side of the road. It just rolls right up to you. Like, I found a $50 bill. That's a lot of McChickens. That's a lot of Happy Meals. You know, that would be really, oh, I'm already thinking about all the food I would get. You know, I could even go to Walmart and buy that new cool Hot Wheels set. Or I could buy a few new dolls. You know, I, I could get a lot with $50. And then you kind of like, well, you know, that person over there, they don't have much. They don't, they, they have kind of ripped up clothes. Maybe I could give some to them, but it gets a little harder then because that's a lot of money. $50? To me, 
I, I'm a little older now, and fifty dollars. I'm like, whoo! Stick that in my pocket, and I'm going to get me some food and some new clothes. Whoo! It's gonna be pretty good, right? And that'd be really hard. You know what? Ultimately, we get to the point that we're so thankful for all God's given to us. We say, hey, you know, God, this means nothing to me. It's money, and it's useful, but you know what? I'm just going to be thankful for what I have. And you want me to give that to someone else, or you want me to put in the offering? No problem, because you told me to. I'm thankful for all you've done for me. We should be thankful for God, because everything we have is from God. But you know the biggest thing we should be thankful for? We should be thankful for what God did for us. You know, God sent his son to die on the cross for our sins. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's amazing. You know, God loved us so much that he was willing not just to, not to give like some money, like $50, he gave his only son to die on the cross. Not just to die, but to die a painful death. To get crucified on a cross for me and you. Because you know what? We have all done things wrong. You know, I've done things wrong. I've gone to church all my life. But I still do things wrong. And so that's what this verse is saying. It's We all were sinners. We've all done things wrong. A sin is anything we've ever done wrong. Whether it's a lie or whether it's taking something that's not ours. Or it could be many different things. But we've all done things wrong. And we've all, maybe even if we want something that someone else has, and we say, oh, I really want that. That's a sin. And we get, we've all done so many things wrong. But you know, God loved us so much. He said, well, since you've done these things, you know what? You're going to die someday, and someday you're going to go to hell. But because I love you so much, I'm going to send my son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for your sins, not just everybody else's sins, but for my sins and for your sins. And he died on that cross so that all we have to do is say, you know, Lord, I've, I've done wrong. I'm thankful for what you've done for me. And you know what? I can't get to heaven on my own because we can't because we've all done things wrong. And we've all disobeyed what God has told us to do. We've all sinned. So because we've all done things wrong, you know what? We just need to say, God, thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, so that way someday I can go to heaven. Because ultimately, we should be thankful for Jesus doing that. Maybe you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior. You never said, God, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that I've done wrong. And I know I can't get to heaven on my own. But you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross and take away my sins so that I can be in heaven with you someday. You know what? We don't deserve that, right? We, we deserve to go and to die in hell because we've done things wrong. Jesus and God never did anything wrong. But guess what? He loved us so much. He wants me and he wants you to be able to go to heaven and live forever with him. And all you have to do is accept it. Say, you know what? Kind of like even just someone gave you money. You just accept it. Say, oh, sweet. And it was a gift. So it's yours then. Well, that's what it is. It's a free gift. God loved you so much. And he wants to give you a free gift. And that is eternity and forever living with him in heaven. If you haven't ever done that, I, I would really hope that today would be the day that you do that. Don't wait. You know, if you don't know how to exactly do it, you can call someone at the church or you can send a message to the church or you can even come down to the church and someone will help you and show you how you can be 100% sure. Know that no matter, without a doubt, that you're going to heaven when you die someday. And you don't have to worry about where you'll go. You'll know. But maybe you've already said, yeah, I already know I'm going to heaven when I die. I believe that Jesus is the only way to heaven. That he died on the cross for me and he's going to take away my he He already took away my sins. And so you already believe that. Well, you know what? We should have a positive attitude because we're thankful, right? So ultimately, because we have a positive attitude and we're thankful, it, it should tender our hearts and make us want to give back. 
whether it's with money, like I showed in the video, it showed him, it was kind of funny, right? But it showed him giving all the money back that he got to God. And we should want to give back to God. And we should want to give to others. And if we're really giving, that's going to make our attitude so much better. And we won't have that sorry attitude because we're complaining about what others have and that everybody's nice to that person or they're just so much cooler. We won't have that because we'll be thankful for what God has given us. And we'll say, yeah, you know what? I'm just going to give back to God. And I'm going to give, I'm going to give this money to that person because they don't have as much as I do. You know, I'm not going to be focused on what I don't have. But I'm going to focus on all that God has given to me. And ultimately, I should always be thankful for the fact that God sent his only son to die on the cross for my sins. And that's ultimately why we should be so thankful. And that should re we should remember that every day. And that's how we should live our lives. And that will cause us to have a much better attitude and to be focused on all God has given us. Wow, guys, every one of us have so many reasons we should be thankful. You know, it's easy to look at what other people have and start to get jealous or want what they have and start to think that we don't have it very good, but God has blessed each one of us so much. You know, today you need to ask God to help you to be thankful, to thank him for the things that he's given you in your life. Maybe he's given you good parents, a place to live, food to eat. What is it that God has given you? In fact, maybe you could comment below something that you're thankful for and take a few minutes to ask God to help you to be thankful. Lord, I pray that you would help as kids are watching this video, Lord, that they would learn to be thankful. Lord, I pray that you'd help me to be thankful for the blessings that you've given me. Lord, you've blessed each and every one of us so much. You've given us more than we could possibly thank you for. So Lord, I pray that you'd help us not to take it for granted. Help us to remember how much you love us and how much you've blessed us. Pray that we'd be thankful in everything. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, oh that was a close one. Whew. All right, is everybody okay? Where Where is everybody? Hey uh, guys, we like just like crash landed in the middle of the jungle right now. It was so crazy. Oh my word, you should have <clears> seen. <throat> you realize we're in the middle of the jungle. Okay. You have no cell phone signal. Larry. Um, I think we're missing someone. Yeah. One, two. Whoa, guys, did you see that? Free snacks all over the plane. Let's go. Best flight ever. Well, I'm just happy that we all made it out alive. You're happy? Oh, really? We are in the middle of a jungle. Do you even know who I am? I am Camille Weisenhaus. I am supposed to be in Rio de Janeiro right now. <clears throat> Rio de Janeiro, maybe? Yeah, there. Okay. And we aren't there. Did you hear that? Listen real closely. Do you hear that? Yeah, it's not beach waves like I'm supposed to be hearing. Well, I'm just happy that God protected us in this landing. <laughs> landing? We crashed. Do you see a plane that we can go hop in, sit, and take off back home? Well, technically, 
technically, folks. At pilot school, they always used to tell us any landing that you can walk away from is a good landing. Did you walk away from it? Huh? I See? trust that God will get us out of this jungle and keep us safe. All right. Now, I know you're probably all a little scared. A lot scared. But with this book and with our smarts, We'll get out of this jungle. See, what I have here, I have a survival guide written by a famous, world fa uh, well, maybe not world famous, country fa- Okay, so he was on a small television network, like public access TV network survival show, but his name was Tiger Grills. Uh, he had a more famous cousin. But anyway, he gave me this survival guide. And it has all of the keys to surviving right here. So, all we have to do is follow these simple survival rules. Keep positive, because rule number one, rule number one, always have a positive attitude. Even though we're trapped in the jungle, we'll get out of this. Now, what do we have in our bag? I have my machete. Never leave home without it. I have some binoculars and, of course, the survival book. What else do we have? You. What was your name? Uh, Doug. Doug. All right. What do you have there? Uh, I've got uh, chips and awesome. uh, and uh, pretzels and uh, uh, my hair. Sweet. Now, Doug, we're gonna have to ration those snacks because that might be the only food we have for a little while. Ration? Yes, ration. Don't eat them all. All right, uh, what else we got? What do you my got? My phone. I got my phone right here. Well, if we were stuck in the middle of the city, that'd be great. Um, what else do we have? What? I got the tarp. Yes, that's amazing. Awesome. We can use that tarp for cover at night, and we can collect water with it. That's awesome. Do you hear that? What's that sound? Oh, oh my goodness! Whoa, 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 take it easy. Whoa! Alright. Take it easy, pal. I don't want to hurt you. Just calm down. How'd you how'd you get here? I... Uh, plane? A plane? Where's the plane? Do you have food? Yeah, he's got some chips there, but that... <laughs> oh, chips don't taste as good as they used to. It's well, been about 12 years since I've had chips. They're, oh, they're kind of nasty. Kind of. Not too good for you. What, what's your name? Uh... What is my name? My, my name's Chris. Chris. Right. My name is Derek. Hi, Derek. I'm the pilot. Oh, I'm the... And this is Chris. Uh, no, you're Chris. This is... What's your name? I can't Doug. Read. Doug. Hi, Doug. Oh. And we have Mary. Hi, Mary. And Chamomile. I guess she's not the friendly type. Anyways, um, we had a plane at one point. Um, no, no, where's the plane? Where's the plane? Over there. Oh. You crashed it. Yeah. Sorry. No! There's, there's no hope. There's no hope. Don't worry, Mr. Jungle Man. God will help us find a way out. With God on our side, we'll never lose hope. That's right. That goes back to rule number one of survival. Always have a positive mental attitude. Now you've been in this jungle for years, my friend. You can help us get through, and we can help you get out of here. Do you want to get out of here? Let's do this. All right, let's go. Now, get all of our stuff. We got to get out of this jungle. Yeah, all right, here, take that. Don't point it at anybody. All right, now, let's go.
Wow, a plane crash? He's been there for 12 years? What? This is crazy. What happens next? Are they gonna make it out of the woods alive? Are they gonna find shelter? Come back tomorrow to find out what happens to our friends trapped in the jungle. Well, we're getting close to the end of our time together today, but we wanna sing one more song together, one of my favorite songs. It's called the Crayon Box Song. We're gonna be singing it every day this week, so if you don't know it yet, don't worry, you will learn it this week. Let's all sing it together, the Cranbox song. When I was just a little child, no higher than your knee, my mother bought a box of crayons just for me. I picked them up, I opened them up, and looked way down inside. singing. I hope you had a great time at our virtual vacation Bible school and learned something about being thankful. Make sure you check the description so that you can find out how you can win your very own Nintendo Switch. I'm definitely checking it out. And come back tomorrow at 6 o'clock for another evening of virtual vacation Bible school. Let your friends know about it so we can all come together and have a good time at virtual VBS. <laughs>